Our next example here on synthetic division gives us a polynomial to the third order. And uh, here you see where we have a, a coefficient that has a decimal in it, which would indicate that you may not have an integer root in this polynomial. So let's see how synthetic division can help us out with this. Well, first of all, we're going to again try a root. So let's start with try x equals 1 as a possible root. Uh, we put down the coefficients, 1 minus 12.5. 49 minus 60, our division symbol, and our first possible root. We put a line down there. First thing we do is we drop down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add it together, you get a minus 11.5. 11.5 times 1 is, or minus 11.5 is minus 11.5. Add those together, you get a positive 37.5. And 37.5 times 1 is uh, 37.5. And the remainder looks like it's going to be a minus 22.5. So definitely not a zero. So x equals 1 is not a root. So let's see if we try the next uh, guess, x equals 2, if we get closer to having this go to a zero. See what happens. x equals 2. Uh, so we have 2 as a root. We again put down the coefficients, 1 minus 12.5. 49 and minus 60. Remember that these are the coefficients of the individual terms in our polynomial. Put the line down here, drop the first number, 1 times 2 is 2, add them together you get minus 10.5. 10.5 times 2 is uh, it's minus, so it's minus 21. Add those together you get a 48, or 28, not a 48, but a 28. 28 times 2 is 56, add those together you get a minus 4. Now, notice how we got a lot closer to zero, which means we're zeroing in on what the root is. So let's now give our next try with x equals 3. So again, we're going to try these numbers. That doesn't mean those are the roots. We're just going to see if they are. So here's the 3. We put down our coefficients, 1 minus 12.5, 49, and minus 60. Put down our line here. Drop the first number, 1 times 3 is 3, add them together, you get minus 9.5. Minus 9.5 times 3 is a minus 28.5, the remainder is a 20.5. 20.5 20 times 3 is a 61.5, add them together, you get a positive 1.5. Ah, what happened here? We actually went a little bit too far. Minus 4 was not far enough. Plus 1.5 is now on the other side of 0, which means the real root is somewhere between 2 and 3. Now, what we could then do is try 2.1, 2.2, 2.5, <clears throat> other number. But at least what this helps you do is get into the ballpark. It tells you that the actual root is somewhere between 2 and 3. So the, uh, the first root, I'll just write it like this, the first root is somewhere between 2 and 3 between these two numbers. And we could continue the process by saying, okay, let's try 2.5 and see if that helps. Hmm, we could, let's just do that and see what we come up with. So 2.5, again, we have to put on our coefficients, one minus 12.5, uh, 49 and minus 60. Now, of course, at this point, you may not find a root, but at least you, you know how to get close. Uh, drop down the 1, 1 times 2.5 is 2.5, add them together you get a minus 10, minus 10 times 2.5 is a 25, that's a minus 25, add those together that gives you a positive 24, 24 times 2.5 and look at that, I think I got real lucky on this one and here when I add together I get 0, I actually did find a root, I wasn't expecting that, but in this case you can see that by doing a little trying, and notice that this wasn't far enough, this was too far, so you realize that the root was somewhere between 2 and 3. I just happened to pick 2.5, and notice that 2.5 is actually one of the roots, which means we can take this function and write it as the product of x minus 2.5 times what's remaining, and then to find the other coefficients to make up this polynomial, we get um, an x squared minus 10x, um, and a plus 24, and of course in this case it looks like we can find the roots of what's remaining there using the factor technique, so we have x minus 2.5 times the product of two binomials, we have an x and an x. Two numbers, when I add I get minus 10, when I multiply I get 24, so they both need to be negative, 
and a 6 and a 4, that gives me 24, so x minus 6 and x minus 4. So therefore, conclusion is that the three roots are x equals 2.5, x equals 6, and x equals 4, and those are the three roots. And we're able to find those using this clever technique of a um, synthetic division. Pretty fancy, huh? All right.